Yes, go ahead. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, like um, Stephanie said, my name is Sonia Reed. I'm the process improvement manager. Um, right now, we're a small group. There are three of us. Um, and the things that we do in the organization is we support the organization by facilitating projects that reduce costs. So if you have some supply opportunities, maybe we need to reduce those supplies. Um, if there's some waste, um, an example of a project that we're currently working on to reduce waste is um, red blood cell units. Most people don't know that um, Unfortunately, every month there are some that we have to throw away because they expired. They hit the 42 days and we weren't able to transfuse them to a patient. We don't like to do that. People um, spend their time and they give the gift of life at Blood Assurance, um, so they want to help people, so we want to give that gift to people, as well as it costs us um, to um, throw that away. Uh, we work on state, um, projects with respect to efficiency, so if you're thinking about patient flow, trying to um, move that process where the patient comes into the hospital and leave, how effectively we are with each of those steps. Um, we work in um, the OR to um, reduce the turnaround time. Um, we work in central sterile, so we have projects throughout the um, organization. But one of the things we've been asked to do is to also focus on teaching the organization process improvement tools that you can use to um, improve your area. So that's what I'm going to um, share today. I'm going to give you a little background about LEAD. It's a process improvement methodology. So I don't really want you to get caught up on the term. Just know you're getting some tools that you can use. Um, we'll do an activity that I think you guys will find um, entertaining to demonstrate one of the concepts. Um, and then I'll get time to ask questions. <laughs> Does anybody need a plain piece of paper? Some people's will be finger green. That's so. all right. We're all about using what we have. <laughs> all right. So what is lean? Um, lean is a method to improve performance and results by removing waste. Um, like I said, waste can be um, you're actually throwing something away that you um, you order in excess, or waste could be you're doing an activity more times than you need or you're taking more steps than you need to to take care of patients. Um, and Lean also focuses on standardizing work within a process, and we'll do an activity around that. It's a method to reduce costs, improve quality, um, and they hit on that, patient safety, patient satisfaction, all through waste reduction and increased efficiency. Uh, Lean focuses on understanding the processes that are important to the customer. Generally, the customer is the patient for us, but sometimes the customer could be the physician. Sometimes the customer could be one of your coworkers that, is rel that will relieve you um, uh, at the next shift. Most importantly, Lean fosters a culture which encourages all employees to continually look for improvement. And that's what our team wants to do. Instead of having three people, um, and we're spread thin throughout the hospital trying to do projects and, and trying to basically um, uh, work on this area while there's another area that um, needs assistance we want to give you the tools so that we expand our process improvement capability throughout the hospital and that's why we want to use lean what are some of the benefits of lean in healthcare? some organizations have been able to reduce their turnaround times and errors in the lab um, some organizations have been able to reduce diversions in the ed and improve their flow uh, so, that you, so EMS doesn't have to bypass us um, when the ED is really full. Cool. Uh, others have reduced patient delays in their outpatient ambulatory settings. Reducing changeover times in the OR, I mentioned that, that's one of the projects that we've worked on in the past. Reducing errors in the pharmacy, improving response time. Um, when a patient needs a medication, you don't want to have to wait for that medication to be too to you. <coughs> And food service, um, can I mention that as well? Reducing wasted food, improving the quality, that's important to the patient. Um, and that also shows up in our patient satisfaction surveys. So, who are some of the companies that do these things? You guys will recognize some of these. Um, you'll definitely recognize Amazon, it's in our backyard. Um, you'll probably recognize Dell, Ford, Toyota, um, Bank of America, Destiny, Bank with, um, GE. Uh, Motorola, Boeing, uh, the uh, airplane manufacturer. So some of the, these are some of the companies in manufacturing that use Unlean um, and in other service industries. <laughs> um, so
some of the hospitals that use links. So these are a lot of the hospitals that are further along in their journey than we are. So we're just starting out. But these hospitals, I frequently look to them. I go to their website or research articles that have been published um, by these hospitals so that we can learn from their mistakes because as you're rolling this out, sometimes there are bumps along the way. How can we do it better? Um, what are some examples of improvement um, that we can gain from them? Uh, so uh, a pretty prestigious list when you look at some of these hospitals. If you come from um, different parts of the country, you may recognize some of those names. Okay. What are some of the success stories? So Theta Care, they were um, there. We saw their logo. Uh, Theta Care improved their productivity in the radiation department by 30 percent. They um, saw multiple benefits with me, but this is just one of them that I wanted to highlight. They also saw $24 million in savings in seven years. So while they were focused on improving their process, there was also a financial gain. Virginia Mason in Washington um, increased the time spent with patients to 90%. So I imagine that that would be important to all of you. There are a lot of tasks that you have to do that aren't direct patient care. So if we can improve those processes, if we can reduce duplicate, duplicative steps, if we can process steps, if we can reduce the physical steps you take so that you have more time to spend with the patient, you benefit, the patient benefits. Virginia Mason, also, while they were improving their processes, they um, doubled their revenue in a four-year period. Denver Health in Colorado, they reduced the cycle time in their peace clinic from 46 minutes to 26 minutes. So if you're in an outpatient setting, just think about how amazing that would be if your patients are able to be seen um, treated um, and released in a shorter period of time, especially in a peace clinic when there's lots of kids and lots of stressed out parents. Um, being able to get those patients seen in a timely fashion um, is important to both the staff and the patient. And while they were improving their processes, what else did they um, gain? $124 million in financial benefit um, since 2006. Seattle Children's last example. They reduced their left without being seen to 0.7%, which is huge. I think we're around 5%. So that's patients who come into the ER, they look at the waiting room, they may even sit for a while, and they say, you know what, I can't, I'm gonna leave. Um, so that's um, not a good situation uh, for the patient because they had a need that wasn't met. Um, it's not for, good for Erlanger because we have patients that aren't able to meet their needs um, and they're dissatisfied. And while Seattle Children are working on Processes again, they saw a cost benefit. So that's a, a thread you'll um, see. Um, in Lean, we're really focused on the processes, but as we're improving those processes, we almost always see a financial benefit. Okay. So, what are some of the lean tools? What are the tools that we can use to improve? Um, visual management, um, can I hit on that? And I'll cover it just briefly because she gave um, a very good summary of our boards. Um, 5S, um, we'll talk about that. Standard work, um, we're about to do an exercise with that. Um, value stream mapping, so mapping out the process, identifying um, the delays in the process, identifying the areas, areas, areas of value, identifying the, the non-value added areas and eliminating them. High events, those are rapid improvement events. So if you come from a hospital um, that's used this in the past, those are teams that are formed in over a very short time period. They state what they're going to work on, their problem statement. They map out the process. They go out to the process and observe. They come back. They say, this is what we're going to do to fix it. They implement it. And usually that's done within a week versus six months worth of meeting, um, making slow progress, um, and sometimes not completing the goal that you um, uh, expect. A3 is just a problem solving um, or a project uh, management tool. Um, so A3s, and, and the reason they're named that, they're just the 11 by 17 sheet of paper, which is also called an A3. But it gives you the steps that you need to follow. If you have a project that's a little longer than a rapid improvement event, but you need something to keep you on track. <laughs> um, eight ways the downtime acronym um, that we won't be able to get into today. Um, Kanban systems, that's a way to manage your supply areas. Um, pull systems. Um, we're actually doing a project on that right now um, for the ED. We want to um, pull those patients from the board versus, versus the ED staff always saying, 
hey, I have a patient. Are you ready to take my patient? On the floor knows this patient is assigned to me. I need to go down to the ED and um, bring that patient up so I can provide them the care that they need. So I can get them off that stretcher and put them in a bed. Um, that also affects our patient satisfaction scores. And lastly, error proofing and mistake proofing. Um, unfortunately, we won't be able to um, get into that, but I'll give you a quick example. What we mean there is designing the process so it's very hard to make a mistake. And a really simple one that you use every day in your life. So you can be thinking about this when you go back to the floor as you think about your microwave. If your microwave is working properly, <laughs> I had one that wasn't, you should never be able to operate your microwave with the door open. It's designed so that you can't do that. So when you think about improving processes, we want to design them so it's almost impossible for someone to do the process in an order that we don't want them to. So the microwaves are designed so you can't operate them so that's what we um, mean when we say error proofing or mistake proofing. So if there's a, a process where we feel like the patient can be harmed, reach out. Um, all of you have um, are empowered to say, we need to redesign this because the patient can be harmed. Let's talk about how we can um, change this process so it's less likely um, that this patient uh, is harmed while they're in our care. So that's all the, um, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. Visual management, I'll do this really quick. So what is visual management? Um, it's a practice of communicating messages visually to manage work, understand systems, or follow directions. It's clear, simple, um, it's a way to present um, information. So you'll see this um, on the floor. Um, if you're um, not brand new and you've worked in hospitals before, you'll see this. So any problem can, make, can be made clearer with a picture. It's easier to communicate and help others get it. It can help crystallize ideas and to think outside of the box. Um, information is visible, creates transparency for all employees, and informs expected behaviors positive. So what's visual management? Here's one, um, a sign that says, um, wash your hands. It's just a visual <coughs> reminder, we need to do this, um, or you're in a situation where you need to um, uh, stop and do that step. Another one where, in addition to reminding people to um, uh, stop and do that step, it also um, gives you quick explanations of how you should um, uh, use the hand sanitizer um, that's placed there. These are examples from other hospitals. Another visual management tool um, here is very clear that this should be connected, this um, oxygen should be connected here. And I know it sounds simple and you're like, I know where to put this. But if you think about, you're in a rush, you're in a hurry, you have several patients you need to care for, this visually helps ensure that you do the right thing when um, time is unlimited. Um, Another visual management cue is hard to see, but here um, we have this station, and there's a certain place that we want to put it. And on the floor, it's written, this tower needs to be placed here. So again, very simple, um, this is where this belongs. Uh, this monitor, it needs to be placed right there. There's a sign on the floor, and that's where it should be parked. So those are some examples of visual management, which tie into visual management boards. Um, so as Kanae mentioned, each floor has, has a board um, placed in an area where everyone can see, not just um, the uh, staff, the patients as well. And the purpose of those is to, to encourage data-driven behaviors versus responding to opinions and misconceptions. And I like to call that anecdotal data. So sometimes people will say, well, we need to do this because five years ago, 10 years ago, this bad thing happened, and this is why we do this behavior. If we have metrics um, that are established and we use those to measure how we're performing, it gets rid of some of those opinions um, and misconceptions or those one-offs that happen. The boards help you focus on continuous improvement helps identify and eliminate waste and inefficiencies. Um, so when you go to your boards, and I'll show one in a second, um, if you feel like, hey, we're not using our boards as we should, when we huddle, um, we're really not bringing our boards in, there's nothing um, wrong with you saying, hey, what about our board? Maybe we should add this metric. Every board should have some additional white space, because there are some set metrics that are listed there, but there's a place for um, the addition of 
you know, we're always struggling with this. Maybe we should put it on our board to um, uh, bring more focus to that or attention. The boards um, build trust and help positively influence behaviors, um, attitudes of the team members, managers, and stakeholders. And it enables team members to see what's going on, and not just team members, um, patients and their families as well. Most importantly, I know you guys have heard this, what gets measured gets managed. So if it's um, not measured, you're not going to manage it. Um, I have a perfect example of that for myself. Every morning I have to get on the scale. If I don't, <laughs> um, it goes badly for me. So if you, if you don't measure something, <laughs> it, or, or really it's more response. How did I do yesterday? And then I get that negative feedback each morning. But at least I'm, I'm, I'm measuring it. I'm not managing it very well, but at least I have the measure part now. <laughs> okay, how should we use our boards? Um, Janae touched on this. Um, team members should meet a huddle for at most 10 minutes each day. Five to 10, like Janae said, very quick, going to your board, sharing information. Um, if you have a patient who um, is prone to falls, because falls is one of the metrics on your board, talk about that patient. Like she mentioned, um, this patient is prone to, um, you know, get up out of the bed when they shouldn't. Talk about that patient and strategies to help reduce their fall risk. Um, how should we use our boards? The frontline team members um, should look at those metrics and just discuss what can we do to impact that. So if you're looking at collapsing, um, and uh, it's it's only been 20 days since you've had one, and some units have been some units have been a thousand days without collapsing, without collapsing. Talk about things that you need to do so that you can reduce that risk for your patient. Or um, on the right side of the board where it has um, metrics with respect to operating margin and growth, um, discharges by 11. Why can't we get our patients out? What things can we do today to try to get those patients out and free up that bed earlier? Um, we've already talked about it. It's a way to identify and solve problems. Again, it needs to be brief because you guys have to take care of your patients. And it should remove barriers um, to best patient care. Lastly on the boards, um, the leaders of the organization round is usually on Wednesday in the afternoon. So when they round, or if it's your uh, administrator, or if it's your director, or your CSL, how do you engage them? So you should stop by and talk to them when they're rounding and say, you know, this is our board. Um, this is what we're proud of. Um, these are the things that we're working on. Engage those um, leaders as they're doing that round. Or if there's a metric that you're struggling with, these are the barriers that are keeping us from meeting that metric. Um, these are the people that need to hear it and can change that situation for you. And then they should provide um, support. They should let you know, thank you. Thank you for telling me about this. This is what I'm going to do for you to help you meet that goal. Um, and, and by that interaction, uh, it, it, it promotes the team because um, you can let them know the good things that you're working on. Um, and then it also um, gives management insight to some of the challenges that you And if you haven't seen the boards, this is, is an example. Sorry, it's cut off. Uh, so um, <clears throat> there are three sections. You have quality and safety, patient satisfaction, and operating margin and growth. So you have your classy metrics um, for uh, this area. This area has been 488 days, at least when I took the picture. Um, they have been 616 days without a cardi. They have been 21 days without a fall. So this is an opportunity. Actually, I'm glad I don't have the units um, uh, name on that picture and by it off. But this is an example of when they're doing a safety huddle to discuss um, what are our challenges with falls. Um, should we um, list the common fall um, reasons and track those so that we can have a better idea of what we need to work on. So um, <clears throat> I know this board is pretty full, but in this white space, that, would, that could be an opportunity for the team during their safety huddles to say, how are we doing for falls today? It's a struggle for us. Um, and we've only been 21 days without one. The uh, middle section, as Kenei mentioned, will have your HCAPS information. So this is the scorecard for this area. The various um, uh, uh, measures that Kenei mentioned, like bedside rounding, um, bedside chip report, hourly rounding, um, communication, pain management, those are all on that um, scorecard. And then, as I mentioned, discharges by 11, um, ED hold hours. How are we doing? I mentioned that full product. 
project, how are we doing with that patient is in the ED, they're waiting to come to my floor, and I'm doing everything I can to get that patient up and get them settled and start their treatment. Length of stay, how long are patients in my area? Um, in this area, we'll kind of figure out the unit, they're measuring their di dialysis patients, and then this is productivity, this is more from a financial standpoint. So when you go out there, these are the boards you'll see. Um, look at your boards, learn the information on your boards, and, and look at that board and say, how can I improve one of these metrics um, in my daily activities? Okay. I'll, I'll skip that because we've already asked ourselves that question. And we'll get to standard work. How am I doing on time? I have 15 minutes. <coughs> so this one, we're going to start with an <coughs> exercise to demonstrate this concept. So everyone should have a blank piece of Hi, Sonia. Uh, there's not a speaker after you. It's like the scavenger hunt. So if you get a little over, it's fine. Yes, All right. <clears throat> okay, so if you will take the blank sheet of paper, whether it's white or green or green, it's okay. <laughs> so your manager can, comes to you and says, we have this new task. It's really important. It's critical to patient care. I need you to do it immediately, and I need you to do it correctly. That's all they tell you. And they tell you what the task is. The task is they give you this one sheet of paper. I need you to draw a pic for your patient. It's important. I need you to do it right now. Um, <laughs> Everyone's looking at me like, what? <laughs> I'll show you one just for a second. Halfway on the, on the square. That's what I need you to do. 
And for each of these, so you'll, you'll draw several letters um, if you can draw it so it covers half of the square. Okay. okay. All right. So the next step is in that bottom row in between the first and second squares, um, I need you to draw a W. Documentation of the process 
documentation of the best known way to do that process. It may include photos or drawings, it's always helpful. Um, and it ensures that the work is performed the same way each time. So um, individual, uh, person to person, uh, when you go in and you deliver care to that patient, and then the next day you deliver care to that patient, making sure you deliver the care the same way. Making sure when your coworker goes in, they deliver the care the same way. It is developed with employees, and this is really important. So when you're going back to your areas and you're thinking about, oh my gosh, we can standardize this, we can standardize that. It should always be developed with employees. So someone like me shouldn't come to your area and say, this is how you should do this. I should sit with you and say, okay guys, tell me how you do this. Versus an interview, finding out how you do that work. And with a group of people, you deciding this is the best way for us to do the process, documenting that and publishing it. It should never be someone from the outside telling you how to do it. It should be the employee saying, that I found if I do this, or another employee saying, I found if I do this, combining all of those good ideas and documenting them. It should be posted visibly where the processes are performed, so it's a reference. Um, <clears throat> if you're in the medication room, if there's something that needs to be standardized about that, posting it so everyone can see. So what does standard work allow an organization to do? Create consistency and predictability. When you didn't have standard, we got a lot of interesting pigs. We may have had some dogs, we may have had some cats. I've seen, well, I saw an alligator last week. Um, so <clears throat> it, you get a lot of um, variability when you don't have standards in place. Uh, standard work preserves know-how and expertise. There's nothing wrong with being considered a subject matter expert. It's a good thing. It's something we should strive for. But we also have to remember if the person is absent, if they're on vacation, if they're sick, um, if that person leaves the organization, we should have that knowledge documented so that others can reference it. Again, I applaud everyone who wants to be an expert. That's what we should all strive to, but we should also document that knowledge. It helps prevent re recurrence of errors. So if you think about your work, and I mentioned this before, and you're busy, um, and you need to do something, um, the likelihood of you making an error without standards are greatly increased. Um, an example of this, one of the um, areas we're working on is in sterile processing, in central sterile. Um, and there is a person, very experienced drug tech, and we had a situation where a trade went to um, the sterile field and instruments were used that weren't sterilized. That person knew what they were supposed they knew the step, but because we hadn't standardized it and they were in a rush to turn over that room and they had a lot of stress, they had some missing instruments, we had a situation where they were able to deliver um, a, a service that um, was not standard and we didn't want for that patient. It wasn't the person's fault. It was that process wasn't designed to help them. Um, and it improves staff satisfaction and productivity. Again, think about that case, that employee who's been here for a really long time, they were heartbroken that that happened to them, devastated. But if we can um, <clears throat> put in place processes to help you do your job so you don't have to worry about that stress, you don't have to worry about um, this is an error prone process, it improves staff satisfaction. When you think about um, if we are relieving someone they, they, their shift has ended. If you know I'm going to go into that room and A, B, C are going to be done because that's our standard work, that helps improve your productivity versus you trying to finish what should have happened on the previous shift. It improves patient and physician satisfaction. How does it improve it? So think about um, hourly rounding. So you're in, you're rounding with the patient and um, you make sure all the patient's needs are met. Um, you ask them how their pain level is. Um, you ask them if you need, they need to get ice or if they need to um, help with to go to the bathroom. And then imagine the next day the person does the rounding and they don't do any of that. Well, we've already set an expectation for that patient, so that patient is going to say, "Well, hmm, I guess the person that's taking care of me today isn't top notch." So if we have standards and the patient sees the same level of performance each time, that increases their satisfaction. Or the patient may say, I want a different nurse or a different patient care tech. And we don't want to ever be in that situation where the patient, they should know, I'm going to receive this level of care regardless of who walks into my room. 
okay? Uh, we've talked about some of these. It resolves problems with efficiency. Um, it uh, creates or uh, it eliminates communication gaps because we have a standard way of, of communicating the information. It helps collaboration uh, between departments and facilities. And it develops people. Um, it increases employee pride and work and increase loyalty to the company. Because um, if you think about, if, you, if your managers take the time to sit and develop standard work with you um, so that your, um, your day will be more smooth, um, that uh, you have the things that you need, uh, it helps, I guess, create a relationship and fosters um, trust with the um, managers and um, feel like, hey, they understand what I'm dealing with, they're doing everything they can to make this uh, uh, this process um, more effective. Okay. I'm over my time, but I said I can keep going. So I have a, a, a quick video. This is borrowed from another hospital. Um, it's kind of cute, but it's kind of corny too. But that's okay. It, it's an example of them using. Thank you. 